Welcome here to Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. We're taking the Kodiak out over top of these mountains. We're at nearly sea level right now, heading all the way up to almost probably 11,000 feet in about seven, eight minutes. And then immediately ride back down to like 4,000 feet to a really cool mountain airstrip called Yawin. Goes all the way up to like almost a 16% slope. So it is, I mean, it's a proper mountain. Touchdowns around 8%. I'm gonna be loading up a bunch of hardwood flooring actually in my plane today. Some missionaries are building some houses out there and they're kind of at a bottleneck right now. And this is the next thing that they need to continue on with the build. So let's get probably about 700 kgs worth of wood, some rice and maybe a passenger and get out of here. Fuel guys should be coming over here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and dip our fuel before he gets here. Looks like we've got 190 on this one. I like to check it a couple of times though, just to make sure. Go check the other side. Probably 150, there's 160, 160. So we'll go with 160 and 190. All right, let's do our weight and balance real quick before the fuel guy comes over here. 62 for my passenger, 103 for my front pod. Plus I've got two seats in here. So that's another 25, so 37. And that leaves me with another 719 kgs remaining. So if I were to go 719 divided by three, it gives me two, basically 240 split up up top. So let's go 240, 240, 240, and it barely, barely gets me within my envelope. And that's perfect with one extra kg behind or underneath one kg, so minus one. So basically within my taxi weight allowance. Let's get loaded. Now you may go. All right, we've got 780 on the fuel. All right, once our pressure comes in enough, we're up to 21 NG, so we'll go ahead and introduce our fuel. Getting out of here a little bit later than I was kind of hoping to, but that's all right. These guys can't continue on on their project unless they have this specific wood to continue on. All right, generator and alternator on. Auxiliary bus, so we can get our air flowing in here and we'll get flaps 20 in just a second. So it's just about an 11 minute flight. Probably realistically more closer to 15 minutes though by the time I get into the circuit and everything. But it is not that far over there. Let's bring open our safe flight plan. Heads up, Yawin. Oh, total of 31 miles away. Not very far. All right, we're planning to go up to 900,000 at the most, hopefully. Takeoff speed is going to be 63 knots. We are at full up and then 75 if we have to come back in. Fuel at caps and selectors have all been checked. As up tower, November Tango Echo, requesting taxi Yawin, 2 POB, will be requesting intersection Charlie. November Tango Echo, Nagata, taxi Golden Point Charlie, runway 27, ATC clearance track uh, 350 radio, and cruise 9000. Cleared to taxi intersection Charlie and cleared outbound on 350 radio, cruise 9000, no from Tango Echo. This is my last rounder up to Yawin today, thence on to Garoka. So hopefully I'll do a time lapse for you guys at the end of that. On to Garoka. Should be good weather getting in there, but we can kind of see the end of my day. Uh, this is this will be my fifth flight today. Next one's my sixth one. So yeah, busy day already. It's only 11:30. 
Line up uh, Charlie, runway 27, report ready. Line up 27, report ready, Nova Mayako. Line up 27, report ready, Nova Mayako. Line up 27, Alright, those are all done. I'm going to board. If we have to abort on the runway, we'll just stop on the runway. After takeoff, we will pitch for 85 knots considering EPL. If that does not work, we'll go ahead and feather it or consider feather. 85, 80, full flaps. Emergency's master crack my door. Tell those guys to brace contact tower. All right, ignition inlet and lights are done. Furnaces, I idle. November Tango Echo ready for departure. November Tango Echo, make a right turn in Sebastian Charlie, runway 27, please for takeoff. Up, takeoff, right turn, November Tango Echo. All right, ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses. Plus is complete. Let's go. 1540. All right, 720 IGT is about what I want. Air speed's alive, climbing past 50, so we're continuing. Airs are 63 knots, so we'll rotate. 740 IHT, that's good. We are heavy. All right, releasing a little bit of my right rudder. But when I actually take off, when I am this far aft CG, I'm like right, right on the line. I really go easy on my rotate and just let it sit there for a second just to kind of feel what it feels like once I get my wheels off the ground. I'm just feeling in case for some reason I ran my weight balance wrong. That can happen for sure. Um, I mean, I've flown FCG probably, I mean, at least a thousand flights where it's like right on the line. So when I take the tail stand out and I look at the plane, I can just look at it and go, that doesn't look right. That doesn't feel right. And I am, I can tell I'm right, right on the line, but. Terrain, terrain, pull up, pull up. It's pretty pathetic that it's giving me a tallest warning at an actual airport. I'm a thousand feet off the ground. That's weird. That's up tower, no, Tango Echo in a right hand turn passing 1,400 on climb, 9,000. That's heading out 153. November Tango Echo, Roger, contact as of approach, 118.6, good day. As of approach, good day, November Echo. As of approach, November Tango Echo with you passing 1,700 on climb, that above 900,000. We'll be tracking up on a 350 radial, yeah, 153. November Tango Echo, as of approach, good day again, copied not above 900,000. Uh, no traffic reported OCTA area QNH, 1011, and contact must be on primary 123 decimal line, secondary 8861 or 5565-10 miles. Windsor Miles contact Moresby 1239 or 8861 Good day. Over back home. And 1011. Oh. Okay. It is only about, yeah, another 14 more minutes, probably a little bit less, probably about 12 minutes from here. I'm really hoping that the weather out there has not come in because it's only, you know, 20 miles at most from the ocean. So here, usually around noon or so, is when clouds usually start coming up the valley and filling in pretty quick. It looked like a beautiful day. That's why I'm opting to do this last flight. And they can't go any further on their project without this wood. So it is kind of important. All right, let's get our landing light off. Engine light, the bypass and igniters off. We still do have our pulse light going. So I still do have a light while I'm still within here in their airspace. We're just gonna keep it pitching for right around 11 degrees on the attitude indicator. And that's gonna give me around 100 knots. 99 knots is our best angle of climb, starting at sea level, and then minusing one knot per 2,000 feet over top of that. So it should be about 98 knots right at this time. I'm going to go off to the right a little bit. I know I can climb over this cloud in front of me, but the clouds are going to be going down with the mountains at the same angle. And I don't know if I can continue out climbing the clouds as they go up. So I'm going to head off to the right so that I'm giving myself a little more space and time to be able to get to my altitude that I need to so that I'm not stuck over top of these clouds and then have to do a 180 because I'm not going to be able to out climb them. Put this on nearest here so that when I'm 10 miles from NADZAB, it reminds me to give uh, Moresby a call. All right, let's shoot for 97 knots now, because we're at 4,000. 
Uh, I should be able to climb all this stuff now that we're over here. Now that I can see kind of further all the way up to the top of the ridge. The ridge is 8,000 at the minimum that I need to get through. It had a sliver of a hole coming this way, but I don't think that that sliver is there anymore. I'm not seeing it. So my guesstimation is we're going all the way up to 11,000 to be able to get over top. Well, no, wait a minute. Now I'm seeing the top of a ridge. It might be there. Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. I don't want to have to go up another 2,000 feet full up. Before we get over top of the hill, let's go over to the strip chart. Even though I've done it a million times, I'm going over with you guys. I have this thing memorized. We'll be landing on runway 15. It's a one-way airstrip, 4,400 feet MSL. Touchdown slope is 8%, 468 meters long. I don't know how long that is. And landing, we can take up to three knots of tailwind when we are full up. We are going to be full up, I believe. Let's go to landing performance. It says I'm landing at 74, which is actually one knot under. So I can add one knot to that. I can take four knots of tailwind, nothing more. Absolutely, that's, that's what we're going to do. So, shouldn't be a problem today. Come on down here. This is a circuit. Not really, that's how we fly it, but kind of. And then if you come down here to the profile, you can see it starts at 8% touchdown and goes all the way up. I think the steepest is 15.8% slope. So it's definitely pretty steep with some really soft areas more towards the top. And zooming on down, if you guys haven't seen it before, this is what it looks like. Really cool place. There's 6,000, 9.5 miles. Mars B8861, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, Mars B, go ahead. Mars B, November Tango Echo, 10 miles to the north of NADZAB, 6,400 on climb, not above amended, 1 1,000. Estimating Yawen at time, 5 5. Tango Echo, amended not above 11,000, Eric Kinney, 1011, no traffic. I just called her on HF, even though they said primary was 1239er, because I'm going to be in like three more minutes calling them again when I get the circuit on this one, because I'll be behind the mountain, so there's no point in calling her on that one, just to recall her on this one. That's why. All right, I saw a sliver, but it's just not enough to waste my time sticking my nose in. It's just too small of an area. Oh, that's why I told her I'm going to go all the way up to 11,000 unless I get up here closer and then realize, oh wait, no, it's opened up. There might be a lower section now that I'm kind of seeing maybe a little bit around this cloud right here in front of me. It looks like it potentially drops down right there, so I might not have to go all the way up, I hope. Yeah, it does, I, I'm seeing now. I don't know if I'm going to have to go. I'll probably get 9,500, I'm guessing. If you guys would like to see some videos of on-the-ground stuff here at Yawin, I've got probably four or more videos at Yawin, probably five actually, walking around the area and also kind of doing updates every month or so of this build out here for some missionaries out here that we're flying for building three houses out there. Two of them are nearly finished. They just started on the last one. That's what this is, is all the flooring so that they can start getting up all four walls. And once they get that, they can really take off. We got three more flights tomorrow and then I'm done until next week. So I really need to get this stuff in. I'm glad that we're actually able to. Considering that they cut it to the, long, the wrong length by about six inches. So we had to kind of strategically stack the wood so that we could get it hanging over top of the hat rack because I can't let it sit on the hat rack because our hat rack only allows 91 kgs and I'd be having around 400 kgs sitting on that lip. So that's why we had to build it up and then let it hang over. You can see the ridge of that tiny hole, but like I said, it's just not worth squeezing in there to potentially find out that I don't have enough space to turn around. I am super heavy. So my turn radius is going to be huge compared to if I was just empty. And it takes me an extra two minutes to climb to increase my safety, so that's what we're going to do. But 8,900 feet now, so I think 95 should get me over it. 
And on that Patreon page, I forgot to mention, if you're a flight simmer, I post, I have like a hundred of these flights on there with like charts and the landing charts and things like that. So you guys can recreate a lot of my flights and places like Yawin and other places are, I have some downloads for you guys as well available. So you guys can put those on Microsoft Flight Sim. Some of them on X-Plane as well. So check it out. And if you don't know how to fly, I've got a Kodiak course on teaching you how to fly the Kodiak. So really everything, if you really want to start getting into flight simming stuff. All right, look at that, 9,400 feet. Looks like we found a hole. We're just about ready to head right immediately back down, so I'm going to pull my torque on back to 1250. Descends and wasting extra fuel. And I have a feeling we might have to go a little bit longer out that way, so I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but might have to go up this valley and around that corner to get in, just because the clouds, they all kind of come down this ridge right here. Because there's a lot of clouds out here today that built up for the past hour. Over the clouds now. Lots of left rudder pressure on our way down. But I pulled the power and we're going down. Speed's increasing, so we just need less and less of that right rudder pressure. Let's check our fuel selectors. Our brakes are good. Our TAWS is turned off, which is our train awareness. Our VREF we've already checked, but let me check and verify one more time. Arrival. 74 knots, so I'm going to go add two knots to that because it is a sloped runway. And I found two knots works the best on top of a V-Rev. That way it allows you to match the slope before you flare. And if you don't add those, you kind of try to match the slope and flare and it kind of all happens at the same time and you just kind of hit the ground really hard. It is looking clear enough me to get over top of these clouds, but what we are going to do is we're going to slow on down, kind of come at a 45 degree angle, so if we can't make it through safely, we'll still have an easy out on our left. We'll go 10 degrees of flaps, jump a little bit, that will slow us down, so just give me more time and space to think, as I am kind of coming into clouds, we'll go 20 degrees of flaps, well, we're going to slow all the way down to probably about 90 knots which is kind of our just terrain configuration. We've got an easy out off here to the left if I'm not seeing enough on the other side, but I'm 99% sure that the valley is going to be open over here because it always is. Look up here to the left or the right of this cloud. There's our 90 knots. I'm just adjusting my speed with my power now. Okay, yep, I can see all the way through really good. So we are now committing ourselves save me going around another like two or three miles down the hill. I'm really hoping that there's not clouds on my base. If we have to go around, we can take up to four knots of tailwind. Winds are coming this way, so we shouldn't have a tailwind. But basically, wings level. I'm going to check the runway for any uh, obstructions, kids, animals, things like that that I could see. And after pretty much wings level, after about a second, is going to be my committed, which means I have to land no matter what. Kid runs out in front of me, I'm either crashing into him or I'm having to crash myself. Because I don't have enough room to get out of this valley anymore because it's too tight. Our prop and harness is complete. These things are a must have for single pilots. Especially if you don't fly that often, you're training, whatever else, you just... Actually, anytime. I mean, I fly every day and I, I love it because you don't have to use a paper checklist. And um, it's a visual thing. A gums check is not a visual thing. That's a, oh, where am I again? And you kind of bounce 500. around. This allows you to bounce around and not miss anything. All right, that's 10 degrees. 10 degrees of flaps. Looking at the smoke down here, kind of as my windsock. It's not really doing anything. Up here, we've got six knots behind me. Should drop down to next to zero 500. knots. Should drop down to zero knots once I am uh, close to the ground. Morris B8861, November Tango Echo, in the circuit. Yawin, report after landing. 
Number Tango Echo Roger, Flight 3 got out of a pass, and again depart. Slowing to 96 knots on our downwind, which is just basically paralleling my base. Getting down to 5,300 feet, getting ready to do a 180 back in. There's 5,300, 96 knots. We're going to add power to maintain altitude and speed here up until we are indicating 1.4 nautical miles, and we'll do a 180. 1.2, 1.3, start my turn, 1.4, full flaps checklist is complete. I don't adjust my power, I'm just in my turn. I got full flaps now, that slow me down, so I'm going all the way down to 86 knots in my turn. So I'm shooting on base, 76 final. I'm going to reduce a tiny bit of power. Went 4850 over top of this last ridge, and we're going to slow on down to 81 knots going over the ridge. Ends are good. Like one to two knots, so negligible. Put a right rudder pressure before we start our slowdown for final. Okay, slow to 81 knots, and then 76 final. 500. Eighty-three knots. There's eighty-one knots. Power off. Right hand turn. Start trimming back. Lots of right rudder pressure. On to seventy-six. There's our seventy-six. Bring our power back in a little bit. To hold that 76, pitch is staying the same, five knots, right crosswind. Three knots, headwind, and we are committed. Twenty six, six hundred on the descent, coming down to 550. Everything's looking good. Six knot crosswind. 500. Flaps up. I go way off to the right because it's really soft over here. Add some power. There we go. Mars B8861, November Tango Echo. On the ground, you and cancel SAR. November Tango Echo, you and SAR accelerated. November Tango Echo. Our landing fuel is 650. Like I said, stay tuned to the end. I'm going to do a time lapse back to Garoka. It's now noon. Others holding out. Thanks for watching.